Hello, I'm Leanne from Spectrum Noir, Crafters Companion, and in this little video tutorial, we're going to have a look at how to add layers to your imagery. So how to make something look further in the foreground or further in the background, depending on what it is that you're colouring. So for example, when I'm colouring a face, my nose is much further forward than my ears. And it's how to give that dimension. And the best way to describe that is using something as simple as a small butterfly. And that's what we're going to be working with here. So this is a little butterfly that absolutely looks like it has beautiful depth and dimension. You can certainly, if I just use my pen to point, see the difference in the layers. This wing definitely looks further in front than this behind. And you can see this one looks like it's lying behind this. So this is the wing that's furthest in front all created by just using different colours of pen but where you put the darkest colour and where you put the lightest colour. And here's the one that I've done which has just been done with one colour and I've attempted to do a little bit of depth with, you know, with another colour in there but it just looks flat and a little bit boring. And when you put it aside, that one, the difference for just using three different colours of pen and knowing where to put the dark colour is remarkable I think and very easily achievable so we're going to explain the concept of that and then you're going to practice and you're going to be brilliant at it in a flash so the colors I'm using are BT5 BT4 and BT3 and they're the blue turquoises and they're nice to practice this technique with because they blend beautifully all of the pens blend beautifully but you can really see the difference in the color and that layering would be very, very obvious. So that's what we're going to start with. We're starting with our BT3. And um, actually I've changed my mind. We're going to start, it is my prerogative, I'm a woman. I will change my mind if I want to. We're going to start with BT5. And the reason I'm going to start dark, I would never normally start blending on, on card that hasn't been uh, wetted with ink, and you know that. But actually I'm going to use the darker one just to describe and explain to you where I'll put the darker colour to create those layers that we've been talking about. Um, and then we'll work a blending it out afterwards. So I'm using BT5 and I know that this wing here is the wing that I want to be the furthest in front. So to make this wing above it look like it's behind here, it has to be darker underneath where that wing would be over the top. So that's where we put our darkest colour. So anything behind is darker than the things further at the front, they're lighter. So that's where my shadow would be for that. And then I want this little bit of wing to look like it's behind this middle one. So building up the three layers in the front, in the middle, in the far distance. So again, this one would be darker here, where that wing is lying over the top of that one. And then the base of the butterfly, all three of these wings are lying over the other side of the butterfly because this is the underside, because we're looking at it from a side view. So actually, it would be darker all the way along here where the top three wings are lying over the underside. So that's where my darkest colours are going to be. And just to give this little front wing some dimension so it doesn't look flat, I would have a little bit of the darker colour just on the bottom edge because actually the wings above would be casting a little bit of shadow over there. So that's why that shade is going in there, just to give that little wing some 3D dimension. So that's me making a plan about where, or making a map, whatever you want to call it, about where my shade's going to be. So once I've got that down, I can then start my blend. So now I'm going to use the BT4 and I'm going to blend from BT5 into BT4 and we're using that basic blending technique that we've looked at uh, previously and I will need to work a little harder with this because I'm working on dry card rather than pre-wetted and we might need to do it twice purely for that reason but I did want to show you how I made my plan with my darker colour. So a little bit of BT4 and then finally BT3. Um, and that's going to bring that out into that lovely blended from dark to light effect that we've looked at in, in other little 
other little clips. It's certainly a basic blending and and the building dimension for the plant pot, but this is just using it to create layers instead. And you can see that's starting to look okay. We'll come back and refine it in a little bit. So then I'll continue with the other wings. So we've got the dark at the bottom. So then we go from the BT5 and this is BT4 I'm putting on, which starts to build that difference from light to dark and color, which gives us our dimension. And then finally, BT3 into the BT4. Just working to the edge, not right back over the layer of colour you've put down, just to the edge of it to kind of smooth it out and uh, dilute it, get it to mix with this layer of colour that we're putting on here. There we go. And then exactly the same. Now notice I'm working on one little portion of wing at a time. I'm not working on the whole butterfly. That's really important because to get it to blend beautifully, you need wet ink. If we don't have wet ink, it won't blend beautifully. Um, and working on the full butterfly would mean the ink would dry before I got round to blending it and it would really, you would struggle. So always work on one small area at a time. And then this is the BT2, which is bringing that BT3 out. Creating the blend between those three colours there. And then repeat it for this final little wing at the top. So this is the BT4, which is blending the BT5 into it and bringing that colour out. Okay, and then finally your BT2, which brings the edge of that BT3 out. And there we go. So you can see how that's really starting to build the layers and the dimension of that butterfly. We can absolutely see, as with my first one, this wing's in the front with this one behind and that one behind that one. And all three of these are behind the base of the butterfly there. Because I started with a dark colour, I'm not entirely happy with that blend. So I just want to show you how you would go again and fix that. And that's because I didn't work on wet ink. Ideally, what I should have done is a whole layer of the BT2, uh, BT3, I beg your pardon, and then put the BT5 on top and the BT4 as we did with our basic blending technique with the little girl's hat. So please have a look at that. Because I showed you where the shade was going to be first, I didn't get an opportunity to have that wet ink. So I'll, just to show you how I would fix that, I'd go back with a little bit of the BT5 over my wet ink, quickly pick up the BT4 and work to the edge of that, which is far superior now because I'm working on wet ink. And then finally, with the BT3, just to bring that BT4 out into that base layer. And you see that has made a huge difference and you could continue on and do that with the other three wings. And then what you'll end up with is exactly as I've got here, a little butterfly, which very definitely has dimension and most certainly has layers in the image. So rule of thumb, anything at the front is lighter, anything behind it is darker and just practice and have a play. At the end of the day, it's a little bit of paper. It's not the end of the world, um, but you'll be able to pick that technique up really quickly and easily. Mm -hmm.